It's quarterfinal time and one of today's teams will move on to the semifinals in their quest for the thousand dollar grand prize. In today's match, we have the Huskies of Gould Academy. <laughs> taking on the Lumberjacks of Hebron Academy. That's next on High School Quiz Show Mace. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility, part of your community. People who can work from home seem to love it. Who else loves it? Cyber criminals. Cyber coverage from Safety Insurance covers data and system restoration, data recreation, and more. You can ask an independent agent about safety insurance. We'll help you manage life's storms. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to High School Quiz Show Maine. I'm Todd Gutner. Well, we've made it through our preliminary rounds and whittled our 16 teams down to eight. We now head into the quarterfinals to see who will continue on their way to the Season 7 Championship. Quiz Show veterans Gould Academy and Bethel have yet to make it to the finals, and they'll be taking on rookie Hebron Academy, who would love to score a championship in their first season on the show. Let's get things going by meeting the teams. For Gould, we have Mary, David, Oliver, and Will, with alternates Amelia, Emmett, and Marco, and they're coached by Adam Leff. And for Hebron, we have Quinn, Martha, Kate, and Mason, with alternate Caden, and they're coached by Joshua Kangas and Aaron McKee. Now the competition has three rounds, the toss-up round, the category round, and the lightning round. We'll start with the toss-up round. All answers are worth 10 points, and this is the only round with no point deductions for wrong answers. Players must wait for me to complete the question, and if one team answers incorrectly, the other team will be given a chance to answer. All right, Hebron and Gould, good luck to both of you. Here comes the first question. In the United States, the official Thanksgiving holiday is observed on the fourth Thursday of which month? Oliver? November. November is right. Cave Game is the name of the earliest version of what sandbox video game created by Marcus Notch Pearson and released to the public in 2011? Go ahead, Quinn. Uh, Minecraft. Minecraft, right. In 1983, which NASA astronaut became the first American woman to travel into space? Mary Gould. Sally Ride. That's correct. In the classic children's novel, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, what is the name of the strange, secretive owner of the Chocolate Factory? Go ahead, Martha. Willy Wonka. That's right. Up next, we have a picture question, so take a look at the monitor over here. In this image, identify the distinctive rock formation found in the American Southwest known for its vibrant colors and layered patterns. Will Gould. Slot canyons. Uh, that's incorrect. Uh, Hebron, you want to go for it? Go ahead, Mesa. Quinn. One more time. Mesa. Mesa is also incorrect. It's Antelope Canyon. Uh, next question. What widely used antibiotic was discovered by Dr. Alexander Fleming after he observed a certain type of bread mold inhibiting the growth of bacteria? Quinn. Penicillin. That's right. Next, in 1864, which Union Army general led a destructive campaign that involved a 285-mile march to the sea through Georgia? Will, you got in there. Go for it. Mead. Uh, that's incorrect. Hebron. Go ahead, Quinn. Uh, Sherman. Sherman's the right answer. Next question. Steph Curry has been a member of which NBA team since starting his professional basketball career in 2009? Mason, Hebron. Golden State Warriors. That's right, Golden State Warriors. What three-letter word can mean a kind of seed casing in plants, a group of whales, or a compartment for carrying an astronaut on a spacecraft? Go ahead, Will. A pod. Pod is right. Up next, we have a video question. So once again, take a look at the monitor. Hello, my name is Joshua Chard and I am the 2024 Maine Teacher of the Year. And today's video question category is geography. 
Which mountain range stretches across the northern part of India and separates the Indian subcontinent from the Tibetan plateau? Martha Hebron. The Himalayas. Yes, nice job. Next question. A species of large, flightless South American birds gets its name from which Greek goddess who was the wife of Kronos and mother of Zeus? Quinn Hebron. Rhea. Uh, yes, that's right. Deep dish pizza, which is cooked in a deep round pan instead of on a flat pizza sheet, is most closely associated with which Midwestern city where it was introduced at a restaurant called Pizzeria Uno in 1943? Martha. Chicago. Yes, that's right. By definition, a polydactyl cat has which of these unusual physical characteristics? A blue tongue, a hairless tail, or more than five toes? Will Gould. More than five toes. That's right. Lorene from Sweden, the Kalush Orchestra from Ukraine, and Maniskin from Italy are three recent winners of which international music competition? Kate Hebron? Eurovision. That's right. What is the name for the clear, slightly yellowish fluid that surrounds a fetus in the womb during pregnancy? Go ahead, Mary. Amniotic. That's correct. In 2022, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., whose nickname is Bong Bong, was elected president of which Asian country? His father, Ferdinand Marcos Sr., was president of that country from 1965 to 1986. Go ahead, Quinn. Uh, Philippines. That's right. What is the only even number that is also a prime number? Quinn again. Two. Yes. The Toleration Act of 1649 was enacted by Lord Calvert to ensure freedom of worship for Catholics and Protestants in which of the 13 original colonies? The answer is Maryland. Published in 1932, Ernest Hemingway's nonfiction work, Death in the Afternoon, is an examination of which of these subjects? Bullfighting, crime scene investigation, or the U.S. Civil War? Martha? Crime scene investigation? Uh, incorrect. Cool. Go ahead, Oliver. Uh, Civil War? Uh, also incorrect. The only other one, bullfighting. All right, here's the next question. From the French for small ball, what term refers to a densely packed group of riders in a cycling race? Will Gould. Uh, Peloton. Yes. Which major river in Africa flooded every year until the Aswan High Dam was built in the 1960s to control its waters? Martha? The Nile. The Nile is right. All right, here's the second math question of the round and the final one. In the equation x squared times 3x equals y, if x is 4, what is y? The answer is 192. On to the next question. Here it is. The title of what long-running TV series created by Aaron Sorkin comes from the part of the White House where the Oval Office is located? Oliver? West Wing. Yes, that's right. Montevideo is the capital of what South American country? The answer is Uruguay. Uruguay. Crop rotation might involve planting corn and soybeans in alternate years to maintain the levels of what soil nutrient that cereal crops deplete and legume crops replenish? Quinn? Nitrogen. One more time. Nitrogen. That's correct. In the 1982 case of Island Trees School District versus Pico, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled on whether a community board of education could ban what from schools? Mary Gould. Books? Yeah, that's right, books. Twin sisters Mary Kate and Ashley Olson became famous when they shared the role of Michelle Tanner on what sitcom from 1987 to 1995? Go ahead, Mason. Full House. Yeah, that's right, great one. From Latin for God from the machine, what literary term means an unexpected force swooping in to save a character from doom? Quinn? Deus ex machina. machina. That is correct. Nice job. When East Pakistan became an independent nation in 1971, it adopted what name by which it is known today? Quinn again. Bangladesh. Yes, you got it again. Also called the horizontal shift, the horizontal movement of a function on a trigonometric graph is more commonly known as what? Uh, Mason. Translation. Uh, that's incorrect. Gould? Uh, the answer is phase shift, phase shift. Here's our next question. 
To demonstrate the rotation of the Earth, French physicist Leon Foucault used what device that consists of a metal wheel mounted so it can spin freely on an axis in any orientation? David Gould. Gyroscope. That's right. The oldest and most prestigious golf course in Scotland is named for which apostle of Jesus, who is the patron saint of fishermen and of Scotland? Go ahead, Mason. St. Augustine. Um, incorrect. Gould. Mary. Patrick. St. Patrick. Uh, also incorrect. It's St. Andrew. And that's the end of the first round. We have Hebron in the lead, 160 points. Gould has 90. It's a great start to our corner final rounds. We'll be right back to meet the players. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by... The Maine Education Association does a fantastic job of giving us a voice. So what do you think? Good manners. To help teachers and students realize that people support them every day. The MEA helps me be better at my job. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Before we head to the category round, we like to pause and get to know our players with that slightly silly question. And it is, if you had to teach a class on one thing, what would it be and why? And we'll begin over here with Mary on Gould. Um, if I could teach a class on one thing, I would probably teach it on pangolins. On one more time? Pangolins. I have, you're going to have to teach me. It's, a, <laughs> it's like a scaly mammal. They're the most trafficked animal in the world. Wow. They're really cool. OK. Sounds good. Are they like, they're like cute and fuzzy, or um, what, what well, do they, they look like? they have scales, so they're the only okay. mammal with scales. And then I think there's probably about 500,000 shipped out of China and Africa every year. Got it. So uh, it's, I mean, it's apart from people, they're the most trafficked thing. And then up next is tigers. Wow. So. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you for educating me on that, Mary. Uh, David? I would like to teach a class on French pastries and cooking them. Are you a big fan of French pastries? Yeah. Do you have a favorite one? Uh, I like the macrons. Okay, yeah. yeah those are yeah. my favorite. Chocolate croissant for me, I think. Uh, or almond. Actually, you know what? If I had a choice, I'd go almond. Um, Oliver, your turn. I would probably teach a class on art philosophy, something. Okay. Like. Are you an artist yourself? No. no. I, <laughs> you just I, want to teach it. I think, I think art is um, interesting. It's not for me, but, yeah. you know, like the social side of it. Nice. Awesome. Thanks, Oliver. Uh, William, go for it. Um, in the past couple of weeks, I've had to teach a lot of people how to graph tangent functions. <laughs> so, graph um, tangent functions. Yes. Yeah. What, why? why? Um, well, that's what we're doing in <laughs> honors pre-calc right now. And you're so, the only um, one that knows how to do it? Um, I'm, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Not the only one. All right, Will, thank you very much. And good luck uh, with the, what was it again? Uh, graphing tangent functions. Graphing yeah. tangent functions. Uh, Hebron, we're, we'll start over here with Quinn. Go for it. That's, that's a hard one. It is. That is well, for, for me. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess meta ethics. So not ethics, the study of ethics, but how we think about ethics. Like uh, the cool. structure of proposing an idea is, uh, do, is, an, is an ethical statement a proposition or is it just an ex? I don't know. I don't know. It's tough to explain. Yes. yes. Yeah, and it's pretty deep. I gather that much so far. Yes. Um, Martha Hebron. Uh, I would probably teach a class on the history of the Gambia. It's a really small country in Africa. Yeah. That I used to live in. So no way. I know a lot about it. Were you Were you born there? No. 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 You just lived there for a little while. Yeah, my mom worked there. Okay. Would you like to go back? Was it that enjoyable? Did you like the uh, place? Yeah, I think I'd go back. You would. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Martha. Uh, Kate, your turn. Um, I'd probably teach a class about like weather and tornadoes. Whoa, now you're speaking my language. <laughs> Why? Are you like, uh, you would, are you, would, you want to be a meteorologist? Um, when I was younger, I really wanted to be. Not so much anymore. My house got... Whoa, wait, 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 time out. <laughs> wait, why not anymore? We need you. We need you in I'm our field. I I'm not a very big, like, science person. Oh, uh, okay. And, so. and I'll give you that. I mean, it is all math and science, so. Yeah, so. But you still are interested in weather. Yeah, my house got hit when I was younger, and I was, like, really obsessed with it. Oh, wow, from what? Um, it was, it got hit by a tornado. It happened in Norway in like 2009. Yeah, actually, I recall that day. Mm -hmm. We had like five break out that day, if I yeah. recall correctly. Yeah, that was one, one of them hit my house. And one of them hit, and did anyone get injured or anything no. like that? Yeah, that was a remarkable day. I don't think there were any deaths, which was 
crazy because <laughs> five touchdown, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. Um, Kate, thank you so much. And, and get back into meteorology. You sound like you'd be pretty good at it. Mason, wrap this up for us. Uh, I'd have to teach a, cat, a class on Caden Dufour. I think, <laughs> what is I, think that? We could, I think we could learn a lot about him and really just delve into the human psyche. Coach, right? No, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> you're, okay. <laughs> Are you like an enigma or something? <laughs> he's a character. He's a character. You could learn a lot. All right, all right. Well, someday you can publish all of that for us so we know more about him. Thanks, both teams. Uh, the category round is next, but let's see how well you do with our viewer question of the week. Hi, I'm Alec O'Mara from Unitil, and this is your viewer question of the week. The Franklin County town of Strong once had a factory that produced 20 million what per day? Was it popsicle sticks, toothpicks, sheets of paper, or pencils? We'll have the answer coming up later in the show. Next up is our category round with the following choices. Call me George, fantastic Mr. Fox, up in the air, hail Caesar, oh brother, where art thou, and Tomorrowland. Questions have increasing point values and wrong answers will cost you. Each team will alternate control of two categories. With each question, they can choose to answer, skip, if they don't want to take a chance on a wrong answer, or once per category, they can toss and force the other team to answer. Now, players will have about five seconds to confer and decide what to do. Gould, you are trailing. Uh, Mary, which category do you want to go with first? Up in the air? Okay, we'll do up in the air. Up in the air it is. These are questions about places at high altitude. Here's our first question for 10. In which U.S. state would you find Denali, the highest mountain in North America? Alaska. Alaska is right. Up in the air for 15. Breckenridge, Loveland, and Telluride are high altitude ski resorts located in which U.S. state? Colorado. Colorado, yes. Up in the air, 20. Which high altitude country located in the Pyrenees Mountains between Spain and France has an average elevation of more than 6,500 feet above sea level? Andorra. Andorra is right. Up in the air for 25. The Hemis National Park in India is known for its population of what rare big cats that live in remote places at high altitudes? White, white, white tiger. White tiger? White tiger? Oh, that's incorrect. It's snow leopards. Oh. Up in the air for 30. The world's tallest, steepest cliff is a place on Baffin Island in Canada named for what Norse god of thunder? Thor. Thor is right. Uh, that wraps up your first category. Don't worry, we'll be back. Hebrid, your turn. Quinn, what do you think for your first category? Hail Caesar. Uh, Hail Caesar. All right, so these are going to be questions about ancient Rome. And here's the first one. Roman gladiators competed at which enormous amphitheater in Rome that was commissioned by Emperor Vespasian and officially opened in 80 CE? Uh, the Colosseum. That is right. Hail Caesar for 15. At the center of Rome was a neutral ground where citizens could conduct business, meet friends, make speeches, and freely voice their opinions. By what five-letter name was this public plaza known? The Forum. That is also right. Hail Caesar 20. A tepidarium, a frigidarium, and a caldarium were chambers in ancient Roman buildings that were constructed for what purpose? Uh, bathing. Uh, bathing is correct. Here is Hail Caesar for 25. The Latin phrase omnia vincit amor, meaning love conquers all, is from a poem by what ancient Roman poet who wrote the Aeneid? Skim. What do you want to do, Skim. Quinn? Cicero. Cicero is incorrect. It's Virgil. Virgil. Hail Caesar for 30. The Roman Empire became the most powerful in the world as a result of three wars that took place between 264 and 146 BCE. Together, these three wars are known by what name? Uh, Punic. Punic is correct. That wraps up that category. We're back over to Gould for your second category. Uh, Tomorrowland? Tomorrowland it is. These are questions about works of science fiction. Here's the first question. 
The title of a 1990 science fiction novel by Michael Crichton mentions what period of the Mesozoic era when dinosaurs roamed the Earth? Could be any of them. I don't know. Uh, I don't think Jurassic. Jurassic. Oh, Ju Jurassic Park. Jurassic. Uh, Jurassic is correct. That's right. Tomorrowland for 15. According to the instructions in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, what soft, fluffy object is just about the most massively useful thing an interstellar hitchhiker can have? Is it cotton candy? I have no idea. It sounds like it could be. Co think, cotton right? candy. Incorrect. It's towel. Towel. Tomorrowland 20. What prolific English science fiction author published six novels, including The Time Machine, The War of the Worlds, The Invisible Man, and The Island of Dr. Moreau between 1895 and 1898? Is it Elliot? Invisible Man? Say it. Is it Elliot? 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 Also incorrect, it's Wells. Uh, here's Tomorrowland 25. The setting of Ray Bradbury's science fiction short story, All Summer in a Day is what planet in our solar system where he says it rains a lot and the children haven't seen the sun in a very long time? Skip. You want to skip that? The answer is Venus. And the last one in Tomorrowland. This one's for 30. In his 1985 science fiction novel Contact, what American astrophysicist pondered what might happen if human beings on Earth make contact with extraterrestrial life? Stephen Hawking. You want to skip it? We could tell. Uh, toss. You want to toss it? Okay, we're going to head it o send it over to Hebron, and I'll read it again. In his 1985 science fiction novel Contact, what American astrophysicist pondered what might happen if human beings on Earth make contact with extraterrestrial life? Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan is the right answer. That wraps up that category. We're back over to Hebron for your last category. What's it going to be, Quinn? Ooh, what do you guys think? Oh, brother, where art thou? Oh, brother, where art thou? These are questions about famous brothers. What pair of famous brothers made a, made a historic engine-powered airplane flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, on December 17, 1903? The Wright brothers. That is right. <laughs> oh, brother, where art thou? For 15, Peyton and Eli are brothers who became Super Bowl-winning quarterbacks in the National Football League. What is their last name? Manning. Manning? Manning is correct. Oh, brother, where art thou for 20? Malcolm Young and his brother Angus, who is famous for wearing an oversized school uniform on stage, were founding members of what classic heavy metal band? Their hits include Back in Black and For Those About to Rock. What do you think, Quinn? We'll need an answer. Skip. You want to skip it? Answer is ACDC. I think Mason was telling you to do it. <laughs> All right, here's Oh Brother, Where Art Thou for 25. The TV series Stranger Things was created by twins named Matt and Ross, who are known professionally as the What Brothers. I knew this. I don't know. Skip. Skip. Mm, skip. skip. You want to skip it? The answer is Duffer. Duffer Brothers. And Oh Brother, Where Art Thou for 30. What's the last name of brothers George and Ira, who collaborate, collaborated on music and lyrics for the opera Porgy and Bess? Toss. Toss. You want to toss. All right, Gould, this is coming your way. What's the last name of brothers George and Ira, who collaborated on music and lyrics for the opera Porgy and Bess? Smith. <laughs> uh, we can't skip it, right? So I'm going <laughs> to go. Cannot. I'm going to go. Sorry, Mary. What do you think, Mary? Uh, Hammerstein? The answer is Gershwin. Gershwin. All right, that wraps up our category round, and we have a score. Hebron is in the lead, 265 points. Gould trails at 85 points. But everything can change in the lightning round, so sit tight. We'll be right back. How did you do with the question of the week? It was, the Franklin County town of Strong once had a factory that produced 20 million what per day? Was it popsicle sticks, toothpicks, sheets of paper, 
or pencils? The answer is toothpicks. At one point, over 95% of all toothpicks made in America came from Strong, with over 75 billion having been manufactured there in one year. Okay, we're heading into the final 90 seconds of gameplay, the lightning round. Players, you do not have to wait for me to finish the question. You can buzz in at any time, but wait for me to call on your name. You get 20 points for each correct answer. Incorrect answers will cost you 20, and the other team will not get a chance to answer. The clock is set. Good luck, both teams. Here we go. Which autumn zodiac sign is known as the balance or the scales? Martha. Libra. Yes. What is the official unit of currency in both Italy and Germany? Uh, David. Euro. Euro is right. How many meters are in a kilometer? Uh, David again. Thousand. Yes. What German airship famously burst into flames over Will? Um, the big blimp thing. Oh my god. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, All right. Uh, the answer is there. The answer is Hindenburg. Sorry, Will. What active volcano is the tallest mountain in Japan? Go ahead, Mary. Fuji. Yes. Who posted his 95 theses at the Castle Church in uh, Quinn? Martin, Martin, sorry, Martin Luther. Yes, that's correct. Alphabetically, which U.S. state comes first? Mary. A Arizona. Uh, incorrect, Alabama. What actor plays Deadpool in the Deadpool live action? Uh, Mason. Ryan Reynolds. Yes. What's the biggest country in South America by area and? I uh, will. Brazil. Brazil, yes. Of the four fundamental forces in the universe, which is the weakest? Quinn. Gravity. That's right. What fish is the main ingredient in unagi sushi roll? Quinn. Eel. Eel, yes. How many U.S. states share a border with Mexico? Uh, I think I heard the buzzer first. The answer is four. The Goldberg Variations is a composition for keyboard written by which German composer? Uh, and that's the end of our lightning round. And the winning team is Hebron with 365 points. They'll be moving on to the semifinals. Our runner-up team, Gould, 125 points. Want to thank both of you for playing. It was a great match. Be sure to tune in next time for quarterfinal number two as Deering takes on Wells. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on High School Quiz Show Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by... Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility, part of your community. Home renovations can increase the value of your home. Safety Insurance offers a variety of home insurance products to cover your home's increased value. You can ask an independent agent about Safety Insurance. Safety Insurance will help you manage life storms. And by viewers like you. Thank you.